when I was growing up, living in a trailer was considered low class. It was considered bad juju. They even had a term, trailer trash. Trailer parks were white folk ghettos. And what I'm seeing is something a little crazy, which I was about to get into. But before we get into that, thank you if you bought some training. Thank you if you're a member of the Nerd Tribe, leaving your well-constructed comments. I really appreciate you guys. I was recently watching a relatively new YouTuber who is in the van life space. And her videos get a lot of views, a lot of views, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 views. And she is not doing anything remarkable. She's not doing anything noteworthy. One video where she was preparing a meal got like 50,000 views. She was just like, hey guys, this is what I'm doing. I'm making videos of her doing nothing extraordinary, nothing special, just showing how she lives in the van. And this is what's interesting about this. This individual who lives in the van had a house and she sold her house, bought a van and moved into the van. She has a van. She has a car which she keeps in the storage unit. And I am just sitting here. Why are so many people wanting to watch someone be poor? I don't get it. I understand the global reset is on and popping. I understand inflation is at an all time high. I understand that people are struggling, but I don't understand why people want to watch it, watch someone practice being poor. Going back to living in the trailer, I had a friend who lived in a trailer and honestly, he wasn't the cleanest person and you would go to his house, the trailer, and it was, it was dirty. And this just reinforced the negative stereotype, the stigma of living in a trailer. And a trailer has bedrooms, a kitchen, and bathrooms. But for some reason, Living in a van has been romanticized. It has been put up as the thing to do. And one of the things that I am beginning to understand is that people are choosing the least path of resistance. People are choosing to be poor to live a substandard life. You cannot tell me living in a van, which gets blazing hot during the summer, or living in a van, which gets brutally cold in the winter, is the epitome of luxury living. You cannot convince me of that. So why do we have so many people who want to submit to living literally a few steps above poverty. Now, there are some people who do van life for the views. There is a couple, Nate and Kara. Their YouTube channel probably makes close to 
30, I would say between 30 to $100,000 a month. Big channel, they travel around the world. Um, they have done extremely well. Young married couple. And they chose Van Life to make content with Van Life because Van Life makes them money. I understand why Nate and Kara are doing this. They have done some, in my opinion, some crazy stuff. They went to an island, spent like 72 hours on the island with no food or water, just living on the island, just crazy. And this is what I feel. Nate and Kara, I believe, are in their late 20s or early 30s. What I feel is Nate and Kara, they seem to be really smart. And I would not be surprised if Nate and Kara are investing this money and in a few years, they're gonna come out the van, they're gonna stop doing a lot of this stuff and they may bed down and have a family. I don't know, there was some discussion about that. I don't think Kara wants kids, not sure about Nate. But there are people who see the vast appeal of van life and have capitalized and made a lot of money with the van life genre. So we live in a very strange time. We live in a time where you can make money by being on the internet. The more attention that you can get, the more money that you can make on the internet. I understand that business model. I actually use that business model. That makes sense. So when you see a healthy, attractive, clean cut couple like Nate and Kara living in the van, Nate and Kara have money. There's no doubt about that in my opinion. They have money. So you see this upperly mobile couple, Nate and Kara living in the van, and it looks like this is something that people with money are doing. Nate and Kara are atypical. They're what Malcolm Gladwell would call outliers. Now, there's a whole segment of van life people living in these extremely expensive mobile homes. These um, military trucks. And they're like, you know, there's a group of people. There's a guy by the name of Bob Wells. Cheap RV living. Bob Wells looks the part. He lives in the van by choice. So I would say that there is a small segment of people who are 1A, living in van life for the money. B, there's a group of people who truly like the nomadic lifestyle. There's a guy who lives in the van, Chad, and he does this winter capping and cooking out. And I've literally seen these videos get millions of views of someone in a van cooking a meal. And I submit that America has come to, in my opinion, a dark, dark place. You would rather be poor than successful and prosperous. I was watching a video about Will Roundtree, who's in the credit specialist part, and I actually went ahead and posted that in my community section because I say it, age corporations do not get you funding. The real estate trapper says it, the credit plug says it, but outside of literally a handful of black content creators, some fool in a mask talking about a CPN can get 50,000 views on a video talking about fraud. Once again, I've seen many people post in the comments, CPNs are legal. Please name the government agency that you can go to and get a CPN outside of the witness protection program. Please put that in the comments. They're not legal. 
and most CPNs were used for fraud and criminal activity. That is the purpose of a CPN, to create a product profile, because this is what I actually was talking to a CPN YouTuber under one of my throwaway names. I didn't, I didn't approach it from this channel. And this is what he is doing. He is developing 10 CPNs. And he says when they're mature, he's gonna go to Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, and get business accounts, get 10 lines, and get 10 iPhones from each one of these accounts, and then sell them, and not pay them. But what he's gonna do is go out and get vehicles. He's gonna go out and get vehicles in this CPN, and drive and ride out and not pay. You know, that's his plan. And this is, you know, cause you know, someone's put in the comment that maybe someone who's experienced hard times, they went ahead and they got a CPN to rebuild. And then once they, their stuff falls off their personal credit, they would go back to their personal credit. And I'm not buying that argument because there are people on YouTube who are talking about CPNs and credit strategies, illegal, illicit credit strategies, and they're wearing masks because they don't want anyone to know who they are. So America has come to a dark place. I should say a segment of America because there's, we got the nerd tribe, we got the people who buy my courses, we got the people who wanna be progressive, we have the people who wanna be successful, we have the people who feel the same way, that living in a van is a step down. And I've asked myself, what could I do in terms of van life? I could not live in a van. I can live in an RV short term, I can see going across the country in the RV, that sounds like fun, because you have a full size bed, you have a bathroom, you have a kitchen, and they're bigger. RVs are two to three times bigger than these vans. So you have a little room to spread your feet, you, know, you spread your wings and enjoy yourself. And that's it, that's it. But I feel that this is being driven by low expectations and subscribing to being poor. Like once again, I understand, inflation is probably twice what they're saying. They're saying eight, eight recession is 8.2 or 8.9%. I think inflation is 20%. And the Fed is going to raise the basis points in November, and they're gonna raise the basis points again in December because inflation is not going anywhere. But as a person, who was homeless, as a person who lived in a boarding house, as a person who lived among strangers, crackheads, drug addicts, alcoholics, I know what it is to be poor. I know what it looks like, I know what it feels like, I know what it tastes like. And there is nothing in my life where I want to be anywhere close to experiencing van life because to me van life is poverty it is poverty because when i was in the military you don't have a lot of possessions when you're an enlisted and living in the barracks you may have a tv you may have a stereo you got your clothes but pretty much all of your worldly possessions can be packed up in the car. And that's van life. You have limited space, you cannot buy a lot of stuff. And once again, I think for a strategic few, because once again, are there people who are living in vans who could choose to live in houses? Absolutely. And there are people who are strategic they're living in the van so they can tuck away a lot of money and at some point they're gonna come out of that van because it's a financial strategy, which I think is smart. If you're willing to endure the short-term pain of living in the van, 
that makes sense. But I do not feel that the vast majority of people who are not on YouTube for a living in vans is not an economic strategy. It is survival. They're living in a van because that's how they can survive. That's how they can have no rent, no mortgage. This is how they can have ultra low expenses and they're not living in the van and putting 80% of their income in a Vanguard ETF. That ain't happening. Essentially, they just have barely enough money to live in this van. And then there's van life, there's SUV life, there are people living in vans, SUVs, and cars. I was watching, it was extremely sad. It was out in California. This elderly man who was in his 60s, I think he was 65, he and his dog were living in his car. That is the epitome of poverty. He was on social security, and because he was on social security and he had to spend money for his medicines, he was living in a car. I mean, yes, the rules have changed. Yes, things that used to work, upward mobility has become extremely challenging, extremely challenging. And if you are a person who's in your 50s or 60s and you have not laid the groundwork for you to have a retirement, you could be screwed. And you know, I'm making this video talking about how America has changed. And van life is a growth industry. You know, I'm making this video, I'm talking about it, I'm disparaging van life. I don't think it's cool. I don't think it's the thing to do. That means nothing to the overwhelming people because this is one of the things you guys gotta understand. Like, you remember my video talking about the black people marketing department, how our marketing department is based in the ghetto, and essentially what is considered to be overall black culture is hood culture, and that is not the truth. That's the predominant black culture, hood culture, hood culture hip hop culture, but that's not the complete black culture. My black culture is A.G. Gaston. My black culture are people of that ilk. But van life marking departments, the Kate and Naras, it looks sexy, it looks cool, it looks hip, it looks happening. Hey, let's let's go get a van. One of the, and this is something else too that get a lot of views, van builds. When someone is converting a van into a livable habitat, these get a lot of views. But I was just sitting here watching this girl who, I'm not going to disparage her, I'm not going to mention her name, but one of the things that I see, because I don't think it's her, and what do I mean by that? Because America has shifted and she is participating in an extremely popular genre right now. She's done nothing, she's just living her life. But because America has lowered expectations, because America doesn't wanna work, because America, because you know, when I was living in that boarding house, I had dreams, I had aspirations. That, you know, there are many people who are living that life. There are people who are living with someone, AKA house hacking, to keep their bills low, to keep their expenses low. And what's gonna happen is a lot of these people are gonna get trapped. They're gonna be living with someone, sharing it, living a living situation with someone until they're elderly. Because I feel, and this is just me, that the opportunities to elevate, to make money, to be successful in America are abundant. They're literally everywhere. There's so many things that you can do to make money, to be successful, to live life the way that you wanna live. However, we, 
by this pandemic has awakened a dark sleeping giant. That dark sleeping giant is apathy. We have many, many people who don't want to aspire to nothing, don't want to build nothing, don't want to create nothing. They just want to go on vacation and smoke weed and have sex and play video games. That is a large segment. That's not the totality of America, but what I'm seeing, because like I, I just sit there and I watch her videos and I was like, she ain't doing nothing special. So is it her or is it the audience? And what I learned from my business training is the audience. She is participating in a hungry, starving audience. There are so many people who want this content. And I want you to think, let me cook here for a minute. You have a house, you're living a normal life, you can do it. What in the world would convince you to give up your house and move in a van? Van life marketing department. Let me go ahead and cook. If you have a really good marketing department, and I'm not saying don't do this, but I'm just telling you what I know. You can have a substandard product and make billions if your marketing department is on point because the marketing department paints a narrative. And this narrative is bought hook, line, and sinker by people who are participating in audience. So in case in point, the CPN thing. There's a, there's a huge number of people with bad credit, big, big segment of people with bad credit. And going forward, it's going to be virtually impossible to fix bad credit. The only thing that's going to fix bad credit is behavior and time. And one of the things that I am seeing here with van life, CPNs, age corporations, they're very distinct in separate audiences. The people who are looking for age corporations are different than the people who are looking for van content, van life content, but there are different audiences, but they come from the same place. We don't have no money. And that place, that audience of we don't have any money is about to explode. It's getting ready to explode. You're going to see a ton of people watching these CPN videos. And once again, like I said, credit plug the other video. Once everyone gets on social security number verification, it's going to stop all that CPN action in the traffic and they will have to move to other forms of fraud. And that's what they're going to do. Because if you see here on YouTube, these people who were in the crypto space, and people who are in the stock space, crypto's down, stock market's down. Literally, Alex Becker, who was heavy in the crypto space, when he's a smart guy, he saw what happened. He just literally shut his channel down. He hadn't made a video in almost three months. He literally sold his stocks, he sold all his cryptos because he knows what's coming. See, the smart people, the people who can do analysis, understand what's coming. We're in the first quarter of this bad economy and it's gonna get much, much worse. We're gonna be in the first quarter until 2024. And we're gonna see a lot of economic carnage. We're gonna see a lot of damage, but the world has always been harsh. The Great Depression shows you that the world has always been harsh, but what was not harsh, and this is something that happened after the Great Depression, at the end of World, II, World War II, America went on this economic boom. This is why the baby boomers are called the baby boomers because they were part of that economic boom. America went through decades of unbridled prosperity because we lived in a society where you can move from Opelika, Alabama to Chicago, Illinois, start working in the factory, work really hard, and literally move your way up. You had economic mobility. You had a lot of people who could not read become managers and VPs of companies because of how America used to be. And that's gone. 
It's just gone. And what I see is, like I said, you know, I'm saying that van life to me is low class. Outside of the Nathan Karas and the people who are using van life as a tool to make money. And speaking of stuff, like, you know, I'm really straight up with you guys. I've opened up my brokerage accounts. I bought some stocks. I bought a dividend ETF and I'm doing a little research and I'm moving slowly in that because I am not going to create a trading channel based upon lies, speculations and hype. And today I was doing some research and there are some stocks that are doing well. They're in the energy sector. So, you know, I'm going to move a little slow because I'm not going to abandon this to get into trading and options trading and stuff. I'm going to move slowly into that. That's going to be kind of like a hobby on the side. I'm not going to make that my main thing. And it was funny every time I talk about trading because I had bad mouth the stock market. I had bad mouth trading for years and I'm not going to change my viewpoints because I have a video coming up on either the corporate game or B school for hustlers. The fastest way to wealth is a business. I was watching uh, CNBC, this guy who retired at 36 because he sold his business for millions of dollars. And he's 41 years old. He has a net worth of 4.4 million. And guess what he did? He retired and he started another business. And because of this other business that he started, he doesn't have to withdraw any money from his investment so his investments can keep growing. Why are his investments growing? Because of a business. So I'm not going to change my thesis on a business. A business has literally changed my life. The business has given me everything that I wanted in life plus it's taking care of me. So, you know, I'm going to have a trading channel that's going to be based upon fundamentals, truth, but I'm not going to lose my mind and get into this stock world unless I can find significant and valid data points to share with you. So once again, there's a, this is the internet. Like I said, Nate and Kara. They choose to live in the van because it makes them money. I understand why they do it. I see why they do it. I don't think it's an extremely smart move for them to do that. However, 90%, let's say 95% of the people who are living in vans are not Nate and Kara. They don't have their money. They don't have their assets. They're, like I said, their assets, I would say to speculate minimum 30, 40,000 a month, minimum. And their videos, are the type of videos that their older video categories get watched over and over again. So they're making plenty of money from their back catalog of videos. And what I'm seeing is maybe people are getting beat down. Maybe they're just beat up. Maybe they don't have any fight left in them. Because when I was homeless, I got depressed for about 15 months and I really didn't make any traction. So fortunately for me, I came out of that and I started self-education. And when I got the job from the time I was at Renegrade up to now, I've had upward trajectory, upward mobility, and it's been documented on this channel. You've seen me make these moves, but unless you want to just tap in, or tap out, tap out. You want to tap out because, you know, living in the van is a choice. It's not necessarily your destiny. It's, it's a choice. And a lot of people are making, in my opinion, these very bad choices. They're very, very bad. So this is what I see. It isn't van life that is popping. It is the downward economic descent of so many Americans that are making pan life look appealing. But I got a question for you. How many of you want to live in a trailer? 
single double wide. How many of you want to live in a, in a single, single wide or a double wide? I remember years and years ago when they first started the lottery and the guy in Alabama won. And he said, I'm gonna buy me a truck in a double wide because this guy had no clue to how much money he had. I think he had won like $11 million. I'm gonna get me a, and they clowned this man to the point where he just disappeared off of the media. There was no social media back then. They clowned this guy. You're gonna get you a pickup truck in a double wide. Pickup truck in a double wide. Because he did not have a firm understanding of how much money he actually won. And when he said that, I started laughing and everyone that was watching it with me were, did he just say that? I'm gonna get me a double wide and a pickup truck. That's all he wanted to be, would be happy. But I'm getting ready to come off my break because as you can see, I've been making more content. I'm moving out of that and I'm gonna start some new training based upon beginners. Like I'm, I'm still shaping it up, I'm still putting it together, but what it's going to be is a significant way for you to participate in what I consider abundant opportunity. But the thing is, you're gonna to have to work. That's the thing. That's one of the things that messed up a lot of people. This pandemic gave a lot of people an extended vacation that a lot of people do not want to come off of. But it'll be in the first comment. Go ahead and get that. Let me know your views and the opinions of this analysis of why van life is popping. I don't think it's van life itself. I think the demographic of poor, disenfranchised people has grown so much that it makes it look like van life is popping, but it's not van life. Van life is a symbol, it's a, a byproduct of that large and exploding population base of people who do not have any money. That's my take. Let me know your viewpoints. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section.